Welcome to Pass ELA. Today's topic is point of view in fiction. To start out, we need to discuss what is point of view. Well, the phrase itself should give you a clue. Point means a little dot or a spot or a place, whereas view is how you look at something. So point of view is the place from which you view something. Let's look at this example to help us out. Here in our comic, our first panel, we have a man on an island and he's shouting out boat. We can assume that he is excited. From his point of view, he is excited to see that boat on the horizon because maybe he's been stranded on the island for a while. And it, from his perspective, he sees the boat as a way out. On the other hand, in our second panel, we have a different man viewing the island from his boat. We are looking at this comic from the point of view of the man on the boat. In his perspective, he might have been adrift at sea for a while, maybe thinking he's going to die, and he's excited to see the island. So we're looking at the same scenario, a deserted island and a rowboat from two different perspectives or two different points of view. So what does this have to do with reading? Well, in any story, there's usually a narrator or someone who is telling the story. So narrative point of view means the point of view or perspective of the person telling the story. There are multiple types. The first type is first person. First person usually means I, me, or my. What I mean by this is that the narrator is a character in the story. They're involved in the story. They're in the thick of it. And so they're able to share their own thoughts. You're following one particular character. And a lot of um, I, me, and my pronouns are used throughout the story because they are telling it from their perspective, the first person. Some other clues include thoughts of the character in italics or quotes. Here's an example. Last week, I borrowed my mom's car to drive to the store. I was peacefully turning onto my block when suddenly, wham, a car slammed into the back of mine. Oh my God, what is my mom going to say? I thought to myself. As I frantically put the car in park, I saw a very angry looking man slamming the door of the car behind me. Here we go. There's two characters here, the main character and the man in the car. And the main character is the narrator. We can tell that because there are many clue words of the word I, my, and me. And we can also read the thoughts of this main character. Oh my God, what is my mom going to say? Here we go. We are very aware of what's going on inside of this person's mind. Now, third person is a different type of narrator, and that is when someone is telling the story from outside of it. It's like an outsider looking in. Um, third person limited means they may know the thoughts or feelings of one single character, but not everybody. So, Let's look at the same story, but from a third person limited standpoint. Last week, Emily borrowed her mom's car to drive to the store. She was peacefully turning onto her block when suddenly, wham, a car slammed into the back of hers. Oh my God, what is my mom going to say? She thought to herself, I'm going to stop there because we can already notice the changes. Instead of I and my, we see Emily and her. Instead of I, we see she but we can still see the thoughts. So this narrator is telling the story from the outside, watching what Emily is doing, but the narrator still knows what Emily is thinking. However, we don't know anything about the man. Let's see how that might look from the third person omniscient point of view. Omniscient means all knowing. The narrator is still outside of the story and the narrator this time may know all of the thoughts or feelings of all the characters because the narrator is omniscient or all-knowing. You can see in my little diagram over here, in this type of story, we could probably see the thoughts of multiple characters. So let's look at the same story in the third person omniscient. Last week, Emily borrowed her mom's car to drive to the store. She was peacefully turning onto her block when suddenly, wham, a car slammed into the back of hers. Oh my God, what is my mom going to say? She thought to herself. As she frantically put the car in park, a very angry man slammed the door of the car behind her. You've got to be kidding me, he thought to himself as he stormed up to Emily's car. In this story, we can still see what Emily's doing 
and we know that um, it's being told from the outside because we don't see any I, me, or my. All the characters are referred to by their names and their pronouns, she, etc. We can still see the thoughts that Emily has, but the difference with an omniscient narrator or an all-knowing narrator is that now we can also see the thoughts of another character. You've got to be kidding me, he thought to himself as he stormed up to Emily's car. This changes the feeling of the story because the reader is totally aware of everything that many characters are thinking. Narrators and authors do this in order to give the reader better understanding of multiple characters. So let's talk about some sample questions you might see. How does the author develop the nar narrative point of view? Develop is another word for show. So how does the author show the narrative point of view? Well, our types of narrative point of view are first person, third person limited, and third person omniscient. How does the author develop the narrative point of view? Well, some ways the author does this is by showing either one character's thoughts, if they're using first person point of view or third person limited, or showing all of the character's thoughts if they are using third person omniscient. It depends on what type of thoughts and proof you have in your story, but this is a sample way that you could answer that question. Another question is, how does the author use the narrative point of view to develop suspense? Well, this is a whole other topic. Suspense means the reader might be curious or dying to know what's going to happen next. It's when the writer does not reveal everything all at once. So think about how this might connect. In the first person point of view, you only know things from one person's perspective or one person's view. So the author can use this to develop suspense because the reader may only know the thoughts of one character. So the author creates suspense by keeping information secret just until the right moment. A third question you may commonly see is the narrator mostly reveals blank through. So the narrator mostly reveals the plot or this character's personality, etc. through. The narrator may use multiple techniques, but these three are the most common. Thoughts, dialogue, and description. It is up to you to look into your passage and see which one you see the most commonly. So if you get any of these questions as a short response, in purple is a sample way of how you could go about answering it or the types of choices you might see on a multiple choice. That brings us to the end of our presentation about point of view. I hope you enjoyed and happy studying.